people, when we say air travel, they think about um, you know, the next aircraft, the best aircraft, the newest aircraft, and so on. For me, this picture really exemplifies air travel. And it's quite timeless. It's someone standing in front of a board at an airport. Um, and it's pretty clear, at least to us, that we think the person's got to be delayed. And um, it's timeless in the sense that this could be one of you know, a thousand airports anywhere in the world. It could have been taken yesterday. It could have been taken this morning. It could have been taken 10 years ago. So today, I'm going to be talking about this problem and um, why it occurs and what we can do to actually change the way we travel uh, and actually enjoy travel again. So some numbers. 4.4 billion is the number of passengers who flew last year. 48 million is the number of flights worldwide. So by one estimate, about a million people at any moment are on board an airplane. They're not necessarily in the air, but they're certainly on board an airplane. <laughs> this number has been growing quite steadily, and it's great. It's great that air travel has become more and more accessible to all of us, but it's also come with some consequences. And the consequences are really that of delays and an inconvenience. This inconvenience has a financial cost. It's estimated that delays worldwide cost us about $60 billion. So the cost of delays worldwide is about $60 billion a year. Um, so it's not just inconvenience and an economic cost. There's also a waste of fuel. Delays in the US alone from domestic flights waste an additional 740 million gallons of fuel a year. And this waste in fuel comes with an even bigger cost in terms of the environmental impact. Delays, not the flights, but the delays of domestic flights in the US spew about 7.1 million megatons of carbon dioxide into the air every year. So if we're going to try to do something about this, the first question is, what causes these delays? So today I'll let you know why your flight was delayed. And um, what can we do about it? And in particular, why do we think artificial intelligence is going to be the way to help us actually solve this problem and make traveling, air travel, fun again? So there are a lot of reasons that delays are caused. As you can imagine, weather is one. And um, the big events we hear about, so the picture on the top left um, is a picture of LaGuardia Airport during Hurricane Sandy. It looks like a lake, but that's an airport. And I assure you, that's airport signage that you see there in the terminal building. Um, of course, there are snowstorms. But it's not just weather that causes these delays. It's a lot of other things, like traffic. As more and more people want to fly, and airlines have more and more flights, there is congestion because of volume. So about 20% of delays in the US occur not because there's any form of weather at the airport, but purely because there's too much uh, traffic demand, so overscheduling to some extent, so terminal area volume. Um, the other aspect of it is, of course, all the different decision makers. So there are the airlines and the airline dispatch, so the decisions being made by the airlines, and the air traffic controllers, so there are tens of thousands of air traffic controllers, all of whom are making sure that these tens of thousands of aircraft are moving around the world uh, in a safe and efficient manner. Um, efficient, not so much, but safe manner. So one of the things that happens as these aircraft, aircraft move around is that they take, it's like a virus spreading, right, like an epidemic. So a problem that occurs because of a snowstorm in Boston doesn't stay in Boston. It starts spreading to other places. Um, so one way to see this is a picture of what happens on a day when there was a power outage for about five hours at Atlanta. Atlanta is the big red um, you know, dot from which all the spokes are uh, coming out. And what we see is, over the course of the day, the problem doesn't stay in Atlanta. So it's not just that delays stay at the airport where you might have an issue, but the flight from Atlanta to LaGuardia, or to New York, might get delayed. And maybe the aircraft is going on to Detroit, and the crew is going on to Boston. So you now have 
your flight to Detroit delayed, and your flight to Boston delayed. And, pretty, and the, what that means is the flight, going to, the flight that goes from LaGuardia to Detroit may then be going on to LA. And so the flight to LA is now delayed, and the flight from Boston may be going on to San Francisco and so on, and pretty soon you start having these delays all over the network. And these disruptions come at a real cost. So um, this power outage that I talked about at, um, at Atlanta, Lasted, the whole problem was put out in about five hours, um, and things you would think would recover. But in fact, the delays persisted for days. They were worldwide, and it cost about $177 million for the airline. Um, even more stark is when there was a computer outage for about 45 minutes um, for Southwest in, um, at Dallas in 2016, and it was $150 million worth of impact. So. Um, all these moving pieces means that a problem that starts somewhere goes everywhere. But that is where, really, we can actually make use of AI and machine learning to actually help us make sense of this. Because while all these different elements act together and there's so much connectivity, there is, the connectivity is something that we can model and it's something that we can uh, start using to predict. While I said that weather is something that occurs to us as the biggest cause of delays, it in fact turns out that 40% of flights, both in the US and in Europe, are delayed not because there's weather at either the origin or the destination, but because the flight that came in, the late arrived, because of what's called the late arriving aircraft. So the aircraft wasn't there on time. Um, so there's the sequence of dominoes that you know, tends to topple on and on. And if we can now use AI to start predicting when that first domino is going to fall, even before that first domino is going to fall, we can change the way the air traffic ecosystem works and the air travel ecosystem works. So who benefits when we, start, when we are able to predict delays in this way? Well, it turns out almost everybody who is involved in this. So as a travel manager or a company, I am interested in the productivity of my employees, and it helps me to be able to make sure that they are, that I can plan their travel more proactively rather than react once the flight is canceled or once it's delayed. Uh, the travel management companies, again, can help better plan travel and proactively start changing itineraries or moving uh, passengers in order for them to avoid expensive delays. Uh, and certainly travel technology, where um, what I would like is an alert which tells me um, that I should, my flight is likely to be delayed, and so I should move my flight and move to a more efficient flight. Um, airport services, and, um, who have to serve airports and uh, who have to manage the concessions, the stores, um, the rideshare lines, the taxi lines, and so on, they can benefit from knowing uh, when the problem is coming um, in advance. Uh, the airlines can plan their schedules better, and travel insurance can plan its products better knowing when this happens. So where we are able to go is with being able to predict uh, delays before they occur and predict the fall of that first domino before it happens, we can improve air travel and um, the make air travel fun again. But really, to think about it, it goes even further because Part of having this is being able to use this for all forms of transportation. So recovery is something that is a challenge, and recovery is an even bigger challenge when all your different infrastructures are connected. So an example of this is when there was a, a massive snowstorm in Atlanta in 2014, and the airport had snow removal equipment and managed to clear out the runways. And you know, as far as the airport was concerned, the airport was ready to go. But then the roads were not accessible. And so there's no access to the airport. And um, you might remember this incident where um, this was the time when there were children who were sleeping in school buses and in cafeterias because they couldn't actually use the roads. And so um, what proactive... Uh, planning really uh, means for recovery is to be able to go and try to see what the best mode of recovery is and um, be able to plan our entire transportation infrastructure uh, together. And that way, 
we can intelligently make air travel uh, fun again and something that we would look forward to and not just a uh, means to an end. Thank you.